A scandal in Bohemia appeared in the Strand magazine in July 1891. It was illustrated by Sidney Paget, whose work met with the approval of the author. Quote, You should see the artist who did my Sherlock Holmes, Doyle told the editor on 9th of July. I wish you would tell him how much I appreciate his rendering. I hope the blocks may be preserved so that future publisher may have refusal on them. Paget's drawings were to establish the popular conception of Sherlock Holmes, at least amongst the English readers. Although Doyle later admitted it was somewhat unlike his original idea. In the manuscript of his autobiography, parts of which were published in America in Collier's Weekly on the 29th of December 1923, he was to say, I saw him as very tall, over six foot, but so excessively lean that he seemed considerably taller, said a study in scarlet. He had, I imagined him, a thin razor-like face with a great hawk's bill of a nose and two small eyes set close together on each side of it. Such was my preconception. It chanced, however, that poor Arthur Paget, who before his premature death drew all the original pictures, had a younger brother whose name, I think, was Harold, who served him as a model. The handsome Harold took the place of the more powerful but uglier Sherlock. And perhaps, from the point of view of the lady readers, it was just as well. When the copy reached the Strand magazine, Arthur was corrected to Sydney, although Harold was allowed to stand. The editor could hardly complain, as he, or someone close to him, had confused the names at the start. It seems that the drawings where Walter Paget had done for the illustrated London news of the Gordon Relief Expedition had caught the editor's attention and he was chosen for the Sherlock Holmes stories. But as no one could recall the first name, the offer instead went to Sidney Paget. Walter did, however, become famous as the model for Sherlock Holmes. He was so like his brother's drawings that he was several times mistaken for the great detective. On one occasion, for instance, according to his niece, where he was attending a musical recital at the Betstein Hall, a woman was heard to say as he walked past, Look, there's Sherlock Holmes. Many of the characters in the drawings were based on friends and members of the Paget family. One was Sidney Paget's brother-in-law, Stephen Martin, and it's believed that Dr Watson was based on a contemporary of Paget's at the Royal Academy School, a certain Alfred Morris Butler. Furniture and clothing from the Paget household also appeared, and it was the artist's own deerstalker which was responsible for the now quintessential piece of headgear. The Bristol Observer had shown Holmes wearing a deerstalker on its issue of the 7th and 14th of June 1890, when it reprinted the sign of four, for it's undoubtedly Sidney Paget's drawing for the Boscombe Valley mystery and for Silver Blaze, which are the most perfect of their type and the main inspiration for all subsequent interpretations. His delineations of Sherlock Holmes, as a strandly rightly claimed in December 1895, had their share in the popularity of that wonderful detective. Sherlock Holmes himself has acknowledged the part played by the artist. In Sidney Paget's diary at the time of his marriage, there is the following entry. June 1st, 1893, our wedding day, was most delighted at breakfast time to find a beautiful silver cigarette case from Sherlock Holmes had come as a present. It was from Conan Doyle. I think it was the nicest idea possible Paget's mother-in-law confided to her daughter, that case from Sherlock Holmes. The artist was kept busy during his honeymoon doing the illustrations for the Holmes stories, wrote letters and read Sherlock Holmes 
he noted in his diary a few days after his wedding, and on the 12th, after breakfast, began drawing SH, worked till 1 o'clock. Until his death on the 29th of January 1908, he was the illustrator most favoured by Conan Doyle and was responsible for all the drawings in the Sherlock Holmes stories and the Strand magazine. Their later artists, including Walter Paget, who did the illustrations for The Adventure of the Dying Detective, were less successful. The end. I hope you enjoyed that one, and if you did, please like, and especially, please subscribe. This is especially important, as only about 8% of the people listening are subscribing, and it really helps the channel. Well, until next time.